Let's configure TP-Link multiple SSIDs with Microtik VLAN. So in this video, configure TP-Link multiple SSIDs with Microtik VLAN. We will try to integrate what we have learned so far from the tutorials here in our channel. Previously, we have set up a TP-Link EAP110 outdoor access point and we will use that again but this time we will configure with multiple SSIDs. We will configure our access point to broadcast multiple service set identifiers or what commonly known as the name of your wireless network. Recently, we have also done some VLAN configuration using Microtik. We will add some DHCP server for each VLAN so when our client connects to one of the SSIDs, the client device will be able to obtain an IP address. In our demo, we will have four SSIDs, Sales Wi-Fi, Marketing Wi-Fi, Technical Wi-Fi, and Admin Wi-Fi, which will be then associated with VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 40, respectively. We will then connect our TP-Link EAP110 access point to our Microtik Hub AC Lite. In our Microtik, we will configure VLANs in switch chip and DHCP server. After that, we will do some client test connectivity. So this will be our demonstration topology. So we have a Microtik Hub AC Lite that we will configure VLAN on a built-in switch chip and our TP-Link EAP110 outdoor access point will be connected on port number 2. So here in our access point, we will configure multiple SSIDs or multiple Wi-Fi network names and they will be on different VLAN assignments. And we have some clients here, Microtik Hub AC Lite and Microtik Hub Lite that we could use later for testing our wireless connection. See to it that we could get or our client could acquire an IP address if we connect to one of the SSIDs. So let's configure first our TP-Link access point. So that is why, as you can see, this virtual machine is currently with an IP address of 192.168.0.100 because our TP-Link access point has a default IP of 192.168.0.254. So that is the current address of our computer so that we could reach this default IP of our TP-Link. So let's try and test if there is a reply and yes, we are able to connect to the default IP of our TP-Link so that we could start configuring it. So I have my browser opened and let's type in the default IP of our TP-Link EAP outdoor access point. So that will be 192.168.0.254 and press enter. So it is launching to the default login page. So that will be admin and the password will be admin. Okay, so if we could see the or show the password, that will be the same as the username. So click on the login button. Next, it requires us to type in a new username. So in our case, we have Inquirinity. Password could be whatever password that you want. So in my case, I will type my usual password. Okay, so you'll type new username and confirm the password. So let's click next to continue with this wizard. Okay, so next is we will configure a wireless 
SSID for 2.4 gigahertz and the password. So let's just type in one of our Wi-Fi names. In our case, sales Wi-Fi. And the password will be just 12345678. Okay, so click save. And this will apply the settings for which we have entered in. For example, sales Wi-Fi and the password 12345678. Next. We will just assume that we have connected to this new wireless network even though we are still actually connected via wired to just finish this wizard. So let's click on the checkbox and click finish. Okay, so we are now under the status page of our TP-Link access point. So what we are concerned for configuration is to go to the wireless menu and configure multiple SSIDs. So this TP-Link EAP110 outdoor access point only supports 2.4 gigahertz. So we could only add 2.4 gigahertz SSIDs. So with the add button here, we could add more SSIDs. So we will now click the add button to add more SSID. So for the SSID, let's type in marketing Wi-Fi. So in our case, we will enable the SSID broadcast. We will just make sure it's the same to the previous configuration. So WPA, PSK. So we have some options here to have WPA2 or simply WPA. So it's not really the concern for this tutorial. So for us is we should be able to have more SSIDs and our client will connect so with regards to the versions and the encryption so for now it's fine so the password will remain the same one two three four five six seven eight and we will not configure any settings here for the guest network or rate limit so let's click ok to accept our additional ssid All right, so we now have our additional ID and we will add more SSID, the technical Wi-Fi and the admin Wi-Fi. Let's quickly add the other SSIDs. So clicking the add button and we have technical Wi-Fi. So broadcast is enabled, security mode is WPA, and the password will still be the same. And click OK. So it should add another SSID here. OK, so it's added. Let's add another one, which is our admin Wi-Fi. So it should be the same. The password should be the same, so click OK. And we now have our fourth SSID. So it is our intention that these SSIDs will be assigned to a particular VLAN ID. So in this case, as you can see, sales Wi-Fi is not assigned or is not configured with a VLAN ID because when we create the Wi-Fi or the SSID, there is no VLAN setting here. Okay, so there is no way to add here. But we could see that there is a VLAN tab here under the wireless menu. So let's click on the VLAN tab, see if we could have some VLAN settings and straight away you could see that there is a VLAN column 
and we could disable or enable and we now can assign a particular VLAN ID for our SSID. So let's enable the VLAN support for this SSID. So enable, enable and enable for the four SSID. For the VLAN ID, for the sales Wi-Fi, that will be 10. For the marketing Wi-Fi, that will be 20. For the technical Wi-Fi, that will be VLAN ID 30. And finally, our admin Wi-Fi will be on the VLAN ID 40. So click Save to commit to the settings changes. Okay, so that should be it. If we go to the wireless settings, so right now there are VLAN IDs next to the SSID. So we have sales Wi-Fi, VLAN 10, marketing Wi-Fi 20, 34 technical Wi-Fi, and the admin Wi-Fi is VLAN ID 40. So we are now connected on our Microtech Hub AC Lite. And as you can see, I am running a wireless scanner. So I did go to the wireless menu, enable the 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter or wireless interface for this Microtech. I run this scanner. So that is why you see this. And this is just for us to confirm if indeed what we have configured on our TP-Link, which is the admin Wi-Fi, the marketing Wi-Fi, the sales Wi-Fi, and the technical Wi-Fi is really there or broadcasting. It is our intention to connect this TP-Link access point to the port number 2 of this Microtech Hub AC Lite. But if you go to the bridge menu, you could see that I have already a bridge interface and on the ports, I have already one port that is assigned to the bridge, which is port number two. So this bridge is just a preparation in the future wherein if we have more access points for this particular Microtech Hub AC Lite. So what you can do is add more port members to this bridge. So take note, since we are doing VLAN on the switch chip, so the hardware offload must be checked. Okay, so I have one port member for this bridge. So here in the VLAN tab, we don't have any VLAN IDs configured. As again, we are not doing VLAN configuration on the bridge menu. So on the bridge interface, you will not see a check on the bridge VLAN filtering. So we will focus our configuration again on the switch chip. So we will have some VLAN configuration here instead of our bridge menu. But let's configure first our VLAN interfaces. So we could go to interfaces and we could go to the drop down and select the VLAN and name our VLAN so VLAN 10 and the VLAN ID will be 10 and the interface will be our bridge so we will do it on our VLAN 20 30 and 40 as well so we will create four VLAN interfaces under our bridge so I have created the rest of the VLANs. So you have VLAN 20, 30, and 40. So pretty much the same. The only difference will be the VLAN name and the VLAN ID assignment. So this one is for VLAN 20, 20, interface bridge for our VLAN 30. So the VLAN ID is 30 and the interface will still be bridge. And finally for our VLAN 40, the VLAN ID is 40. And the interface is bridge one. Next, we will assign IP address to each of our VLAN interfaces. So we go to IP menu, addresses, plus sign, and type in the 
IP address. For our demonstration, let's keep it simple, a class C IP address. So the interface will select VLAN 10. So 192.168.10.1 slash 24 for our VLAN 10. Apply. Okay. So I have added the IP address for VLAN 20. So that will be 192.168.20.1 for VLAN 30. That will be 192.168.30.1. And finally, for VLAN 40 interface, 192.168.40.1 slash 24. So we have now IP address assignment to each of our VLAN interfaces. Next, we will configure DHCP server for each of the VLAN interface. So we go to IP. DHCP server. This time we'll make use of the DHCP setup. So we'll click on this one and the DHCP server interface will be listening on VLAN 10 or each of the VLAN interfaces. So for this one, let's have VLAN 10 first. Let's click next. That will be the correct network address for our VLAN 10. So click next. The gateway address, that will be the interface IP of our VLAN 10. So that is correct. So addresses to give out. So this is correct. So next, DNS server. So we could put a sample DNS server here. This time, okay for 10 minutes. So next, and the setup is completed for VLAN 10 interface. And to speed things up, so I have also run a DHCP setup for the rest of the VLAN interfaces. So now you see I have here for VLAN 20, a DHCP server for VLAN 20 interface, for VLAN 30 interface, and finally for VLAN 40 interface. So the address pool is different. So if we go to IP pool, so you'll see the different IP pools for our VLAN subnets. So we have for 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, and VLAN 40. So now the only thing that is left to configure is the Microtik VLAN configuration on the switch chip. So that's why we go to the switch menu. And we go to the port tab. So as you can see, we have Ether 1 to Ether 5 and the CPU port. So Ether 1 is the only connection because this virtual machine is connecting via that interface. But here, our TP-Link, we are planning to connect it to port number 2 or Ether 2. So right now, Ether 2 is not yet connected. So we will focus now our configuration on Ether2, which is the connection to our TP-Link. So this port should allow multiple VLANs to traverse. Because as you remember, we are serving different VLANs here on our SSID. So we have VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40. So this port should not be statically assigned to a single VLAN ID. So it should allow multiple VLANs to traverse to this particular port. So meaning to say this would be a trunk port or a tag interface configuration. So the way to do it in our Microtik is we will enable the VLAN mode to secure, for example and the VLAN header for a tag interface. So we will select add if missing and there will be no default VLAN ID for this demonstration. So click apply, click OK. So when VLAN is configured, we can also limit the access to the CPU by configuring the VLAN mode to secure. For the VLAN header, we leave it as the default leave as is so click apply click ok next we will go to the vlan tab and add our vlan ids here so we click the plus sign and type in the vlan id for example vlan 10 so the ports will be our 
port number 2 and we will also add our switch 1 CPU port to access those VLAN 10 or VLAN interfaces that we have configured a while ago. Okay, so Ether 2, the connection to our TP link and the switch 1 CPU for our VLAN interfaces. So click apply, click OK. So again, to speed things up, so I also added the other VLAN IDs. So we have VLAN 20, would still be the same, Ether 2 and Switch 1 CPU port, as well as for VLAN 30 and VLAN 40. So now I have connected our TP-Link access point on the port number 2 of our Microtech Hub AC Lite. So as you can see, it is not slanted, so it's connected now. So all it's left is to go to our client and see if it could join or connect to the wireless or the SSID and for this client to be able to acquire the corresponding IP address from the address pool. Okay, so we will now go to our clients. So I'm now connected to one of our clients, so client 1, which is our Microtech Hub AC Lite. So YLAN 1 is our 2.4 GHz interface, so it's still disabled. So if we go into the wireless tab, I've already configured it. So the mode will be station sudo bridge because we are connecting from a Microtech to a non-Microtech device. So match the band. Okay, so the SSID will be match sales Wi-Fi for this example. And for the password, that will be 12345678. So it is inside this security profile PSK. So if I close this one and go to the security profile, so there is this security profile PSK. And you'll notice that is the WPA pre-shared key. So 12345678. Also, here in our Microtech Hub AC Lite, I've configured IP DHCP client on YLAN 1 interface. Okay, so let's enable now our wireless interface. So we will see if there is a connection or is able to connect if we have some TXRX and we will also look at the registration tab. So let's enable this one, selecting the YLAN 1 interface. Let's enable. Let's wait for it. If it's running, and it's running, there is TX and RX reading. So if we go to registration, it's connected to a non microtech because the radio name is not present. Okay. And now let's try to see if it can acquire an IP address. So IP DHCP client, and let's enable this one. And yes, our client 1 is able to get an IP from the VLAN 10 subnet. So 192.168.10.254. So if we do some ping test, so tools ping, and type in the 192.168.10.1, which is the IP address of our Microtech Hub AC Lite VLAN 10 interface. So to see if our client can connect to it, via our TP-Link access point. So 192.168.10.1 and yes, we are able to reach our Microtech Hub AC Lite VLAN 10 interface. We are now in our second client, client number 2, which is a Microtech Hub Lite. As you can see, it has a single wireless interface which only supports 2.4 GHz. So it's currently disabled. So Already configured the wireless, so mode will still be the same, station sudo bridge, so marketing Wi-Fi this time, and the security profile will be PSK, or the name of the profile, because here I already configured that there is a PSK, or I already added a security profile named PSK, and the password will be our 12345678. So let's enable our YLAN 1 interface. So click the check sign or check button. And yes, it's running. So there is TX and RX reading and registration. And yes, it's connected to a non Microtech 
access point. Now that our Wi-Fi is connected, let's take a look at our IP DHCP client. So I already configured a DHCP client on WLAN 1 interface. So let's just enable this one. And yes, it acquires an IP address of 192.168.20, that's something, which is under the VLAN 20 subnet. So let's go to Tools Ping and see if we could reach the VLAN 20 interface IP of our Microtik Hub AC Lite. And yes, we are able to reach that particular IP. Let's use a mobile phone this time to connect to our technical Wi-Fi. So the password will still be 12345678. And let's click connect. And yes, we are able to connect. And as you can see, we are able to get a VLAN 30 subnet IP address. We will just use again the client 2 to connect to our admin Wi-Fi. So let's quickly get through with that. So admin Wi-Fi and the security profile will still be PSK. So let's enable, see if it's running. And yes, it's running and registration, it's connected. Let's go to IP DHCP client and enable this one. And yes, we are able to get a VLAN 40 IP address. Let's go to Tools Ping. And this time, let's ping a different IP 40.1. So let's click Start. And yes, we are able to ping the VLAN 40 interface. So in this video, configure TP-Link multiple SSIDs with Microtik VLAN. We are able to configure multiple SSIDs or wireless network names in our TP-Link access point. We also have configured VLAN interfaces, DHCP server for each VLAN interface, and VLAN on the switch chip in our Microtik. And finally, we are able to test with multiple clients that indeed we are able to connect to our Wi-Fi and obtain IP address from the appropriate subnet. I hope you find this video helpful and useful. Thank you for watching.